Hey everybody, it's Matt again for God and Gears, and this is going to be episode 130, and I'm going to talk about Stephen uh, in the Bible, one of uh, Jesus' disciples. All right, so I'm going to be in Acts chapter 7, and I'm going to be in verse verses 51 through 60, but before I read that, I'll kind of give you the, the lowdown of what happened before we got to this point, because there's a lot of verses here in, in chapter 7, well, there's 60 verses, but um, and I'm not going to read all that, but um, so after the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus, okay, Stephen, he was one of Jesus' disciples. Uh, he was brought before the Jewish council, and he was being uh, falsely ac accused of blasphemy and uh, against the temple law also. So he was getting uh, false accusations against them. And I, I think it's ironic because also Jesus also obviously was falsely accused. And uh, so Stephen, he was, whenever he got, he was in with the council, he was given all them there, basically a history lesson, talking about the, the prophets and the, the fathers, you know, to the council. And so that kind of brings us up. I mean, I left some things up. That kind of brings us up to verse 51. And then I'm going to start there, okay? <clears throat> so this would be Stephen actually speaking. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do, ye, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one, that would be Jesus, of whom ye have now been and the betrayers and murderers? Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it? When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. So the, the council was ticked off royally when they started hearing some of this. And in verse 55, But he, this is Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God <clears throat> and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and they stomped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then verse 60, and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So <clears throat> there's a few things I want to talk about here. You notice that the Holy Spirit, you know, it can be resisted. Um, though the Spirit brings truth to bear on the heart and the mind, you know, a person can be stubborn and unwilling to respond to the Holy Spirit. And then so in verse 55 and 56, you know, it says Jesus was standing on the right hand of God. And <clears throat> Jesus, he's often presented as sitting on the right hand of the Father. Okay, and so I found that, I found that interesting because um, at this point when Stephen said he saw him, you know, he was standing there. And so whenever we see like a, a defendant you know, in a courtroom, you know, the defense usually they remain seated in the presence of the judge, you know, rising up only to make an objection uh, or when the client becomes under a severe attack or misrepresentation. So I think it's significant that Jesus, that Stephen saw Jesus, you know, standing up at God's right hand. You know, and then before Stephen died in verses 59 and 60, uh, Stephen, he followed in Jesus' footsteps, you know, commending in his spirit to the Lord and praying that God will forgive his attackers. Uh, Stephen, you know, he was so in tune with God, you know, that he saw the heavens open and he saw the glory of God. Uh, he loved others more than he loved himself. And, you know, Stephen was born in sin, just like you or I, um, you or I. Like <laughs> and, um, you know, it was possible for him to have such a close connection with God. And so that's possible for us, too. If it was possible for Stephen, it's possible for us, too. And so we want to keep Christ first in all things. And whenever I know I say that a lot, but we really need to keep him first. And everything we need to make a point daily to um, 
Daniel, it says in Daniel, you know, Daniel purposed in his heart. We need to make a point daily to, I'm going to put Jesus first before everything else. And whenever we do that and we have that closer relationship with him, we'll, we'll see heavens. You know, we'll see the heavens open. We'll, we'll see. Um, we also, so like I said, we don't want to resist the Holy Spirit and um, keep Christ first. And we want to love others more than we love ourselves. When and I, I touched on that last week, when you're thinking about other people, you're not worried about your problems and what you're kind of dealing with. You, God will get you through it. You focus on others and focus on what uh, he has you to do. All right, so I have a word of prayer, and then we'll talk about the car. <clears throat> Dear Lord Jesus, we're thankful for the day you've given us, Lord. And just a, a good reminder, you know, Stephen was, uh, actually, I believe he was one of the first uh, martyrs for the church. And um, just a good example for us, Lord, you know, he was human and born in sin, and we we're all human, Lord. We were born in sin also. If Stephen could do it, well, we can do it. There's, there's no reason why we can't, but Lord, we have to want it, and we have to make the connection with you and it has to be just a daily thing constantly all the time we have to keep you in the forefront of our minds so i hope this message will be a blessing to people and just thank you again for your blessings and what you do for us lord in jesus name we do pray amen all right so i we cut the quarter panel off last week and i'm still finishing up a couple little odds and ends inside here which you know Stace doesn't have to really focus on nothing that, but I still got a little bit of the floor over there and we cut this out and then we're going to continue on cutting out the old inner fender wells there and then start with my new rocker panels and cutting some old stuff out of there. So we're, we're in progress to move over to this side. Not quite done with this side yet, but just about. And uh, it, like I said, it's turning out good. It looks good. And uh, that's about it. I want to thank Stace for doing the videos. She does a good job as, as always. And I want to thank Hilltop Baptist for the use of the garage. And um, everybody, you know, just like I said, stay focused. Um, keep Ukraine in your prayers also. And we will see you next week.